Hello and welcome. Francis here. Thank you for coming back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I bid thee welcome. There is a subscribe button below if you would like to help support this channel by subscribing. And also the bell will let you be notified as to when I upload more content. I'm coming to you from Ghana country and as such I acknowledge the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains as being the traditional custodians of this land. So I'm just going to share something from my contemporary witchcraft, foundational practices for a magical life book that came out by Moon Books, I should know this, 2021. And in particular, I just want to talk about one's highest ideal. Because within contemporary witchcraft, there is a concept of acting with respect to one's highest ideal. As within the Church of the Goddess, the Moon Goddess states, keep pure your highest ideal. Strive ever towards it. Let not stop you or turn you aside. So what is one's highest ideal? Can it actually be likened to their true will, which is found within the magical tradition, where the individual, a follower of a particular path, acts in accordance with their higher self, their holy guardian angel. Within contemporary witchcraft, this means that the neophyte, the seeker, the beginner, grows spiritually. And as they grow, their horizons, their personal limitations, their preconceptions consciously, continuously expand and also mature. This is because we each have embarked on an endless quest for spiritual self-discovery and learning, and it goes on and on and on. Within my own tradition of contemporary witchcraft, the neophyte, the seeker, the beginner, the novice, is given two passwords to assist them along this path. And these passwords are considered appropriate since they indicate unconditional or perfect compassion, love, and wisdom, trust. The neophyte or the seeker are also provided with a standard against which measure such actions, such motivations, and such growth. So prior to initiation, a person is expected to have meditated on the phrase perfect love and perfect trust in order to gain a deeper understanding of what this phrase actually means. Likewise, any person seeking entry into and in a court of a contemporary witchcraft coven is expected to understand or at least to have given consideration to the words of the goddess and to endeavour to strive ever towards their highest ideal. For this implies that the neophyte seeker, the novice, grows within the craft, expands their horizons, their personal limitations, their preconceptions, or also then expand and mature. Whether we believe in our actions, like our thoughts, like our words, these all have magical effect. They ground, they just cement our morality or lack thereof in our daily lives. When we give our word, do we keep it? Do we break it? Do we show up? And this grounding creates the habits and the environment that then fuel and reinforce our future directions. 
if we claim to value compassion, personal responsibility, self-knowledge. In other words, to have a conscience. But we actually enact selfishly and self-indulgent. And own constant emotional self-stimulation. These latter qualities are what we tend to invoke into manifestation in our minds and then into our environment. But we're not being true to our compassion, to our self-responsibility and our self-knowledge. Like any magical invocation, this is all governed by two factors. What are we invoking? Our ideas, our concepts of divinity, for example. And secondly, the amount and type of personal energy that we are putting in. Both of these factors must be strongly present and aligned for more positive magical operations to succeed. Otherwise, we simply invoke our own negativities and hidden motives that we have sort of clothed in some sort of defined form with the intending results manifesting in our spiritual and personal lives. Real magic and spiritual religious maturity depends upon being sincere, having practical morality, also insight. Often morality demands that we have discipline, capacity to overcome laziness and to work at things that we would not otherwise do. In magic, as in life, things that are worth having must be worked for. This follows that a spiritual path worthy of its name must have precise transcendent ideals. That is, the ideals that force us to go beyond our personal motives, our personal concepts, and our personal expectations. Anything else is unworthy of being called a serious spiritual pursuit. And in contemporary witchcraft, when we cast our magic circle, we also invite into it our gods. When we step into our magical circle, we are striving to become one of our gods as earthly incarnates of them, these higher powers. As such, it is a very important humbling experience when we find ourselves before them. When we step into our magical circle, we perceive not only our coffin brothers and sisters as being children of the gods, but we are also reminded the goddess loves all her children, and as such, what we should be striving for is to take this act of humility and compassion out beyond our circle, incorporating it in our everyday lives. For if we truly believe in magic, then we know that if we are constantly thinking of somebody in a certain way, that is how they are going to become. And that person also relates to our own self. The understanding me or the understanding meaning of highest ideal is realizing this ongoing obligation of such sorts that we have in demonstrating constant morality, self-examination, spiritual aspiration, and deep concern 
for the welfare, the development and the happiness of other people, all others, regardless of their spiritual and or religious persuasions. It is an acting upon this ongoing obligation of self-examination that we constantly strive towards our highest ideals just as we are encouraged to do within the charge of the goddess. Because remember, our thoughts, our actions, the words we speak, all create our perceptions, our environment, the magic, the energy around us. Blessing.